Since Microsoft abandoned its flight simulation assets back in 2006, Lockheed Martin took over the ESP side of the platform. The ESP platform is used as a commercial simulator base and has a mission that is to provide the deepest and richest training and development tools for both commercial users as well as software developers in the flight simulation genre. This sort of openness with developers has allowed not only smaller up and coming developers to create businesses to sell to consumers as well as other businesses, but also allows them to increase their proficiency and capabilities using the Microsoft Flight Simulation platform. Their focus has always been developer feedback first and foremost because developers create the tools for their mission. Fortunately, Lockheed Martin threw a bone to the community in allowing its commercial simulation platform to be opened up for training and academic purposes. Those with real world training needs as well as academic fields of study that were related to aviation were both accommodated. Today is the most expandable and large platform that Lockheed Martin has ever aspired to create. And so it's my pleasure to give you my first look at P3D version 4. Now, first of all, I know that many of you may be thinking, well, it doesn't look much different. It doesn't look very next gen or high tech. But after this video, hopefully you'll be able to see why V4 opens up a new world to not only developers, but also core commercial clients of Lockheed Martin alike. To not only learn within this environment, but also learn the 64 bit world on a broader scale. So we'll go ahead and keep the feature list short because as with V3, I focus on most of the things that I need as a private pilot and also a simulation enthusiast. Now, as you'll soon see a little bit later, there's still a great value proposition in P3D version 3, so don't go in installing it just yet if it's your primary sim. However, we will be talking about the key changes in the simulator. Now, it's a little bit too early to talk about performance, but I do have some of the frame rate counters up in some of the shots that you can look at in the top right, and of course we won't be talking about VAS. We will be looking at the broader platform, understanding how expandable it is, and trying to get a glimpse of what the future of P3D will look like. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are inside of the V4 interface. First of all, you'll see that everything pretty much looks the same as V3. You can see you have different weather themes that can be selected right here from the main menu, along with, of course, changing your airport, location, your time, and of course, your vehicle. I will point out that all of the vehicles that you're used to seeing in V3 are pretty much here again. Most of them are fully compatible um, as of this build, although there are a few little bugs that need to be worked out. But for the most part, all of the helicopters, the uh, water-based vehicles, along with the core aircraft are all there. One really cool thing that you can now do from the main menu of the V4 is access options. So here from options, without even having to launch the simulator, you can adjust all of the core options, including your controls, your calibrations, your display settings, your graphics, your sound, etc. Just for the purpose of this video, we'll walk through them. So as you can see, you have all of your normal options here in the application side. Information, show vehicle labels, as well as all of your primary text. Basically all of the same information from V3, but now just kind of reorganized. In the sound side, traffic, realism, all of the things here are the same. And by the way, physics in V4 are the same as physics in V3. Display, all of this remains the same. However, you do now have more uh, options for anti-aliasing, all the way up to 8x SSAA. This does, of course, take a pretty significant frame hit, but really makes the anti-aliasing look remarkably sharp. Of course, texture filtering and your texture resolution goes up to 4096, and hey, now that it's 64-bit, why not? You have V-Sync options, triple buffering, and then of course the regular uh, view and panel settings. Underworld, just about everything remains the same, but there are a few changes. So you see the familiar things such as LOD radius, which we'll be talking a little bit more about exponents a little bit later, tessellation mesh, 
texture resolution. You also see here that you now have the option to use high resolution terrain textures. That's nothing that you can necessarily see right now in the sim, but in the future, as companies such as Orbix and others start to develop higher and higher resolution sceneries to take advantage of 64 bit, you'll see this come to fruition. Scenery complexity is the same. You now see something that says Autogen draw distance, which is exactly what you think it is. It's the distance at which Autogen is drawn. This is very helpful for those of you who, let's say, use Photoreal or use a limited Autogen. Um, it definitely can help balance performance a little bit more for you. You also see over here, water detail is the same, bathmetry, etc. But down here, you do see another new checkbox, which is dynamic 3D Autogen vegetation. And basically what that is, is things such as speed trees, but is also very expandable. So as you think about uh, operations such as Orbix flows or people flow, et cetera, this now will allow you to turn those things on and off and maybe even will create some new custom options in terms of scenery immersion. In lighting, everything remains exactly the same. Um, you can see that uh, the options have been simplified and this is actually the way that it comes um, configured default, which I think is exactly the right configuration for most folks. Shadow quality, of course, you can adjust. At Ultra, it does look very good. Um, it used to be a big frame rate hog and it still is to a certain extent, but it does look very good and much sharper um, at the higher end. Dynamic reflections, of course, right now are a huge, huge hog in terms of performance. Hoping that that does continue to get better, especially um, possibly with more scale form enhancements. But for right now, I'd recommend that you leave it off unless you're running extremely high end hardware. Um, dynamic lighting is definitely something to think about in P3D version 4. And the reason why is because although it is not as dynamic as some um, simulators out there, it really, really adds a lot to the local immersive environment of the simulator. And what I mean by that is it really is transformative the way that the old FS Labs um, uh, light tool was as well. It basically it takes light objects from within the simulator such as let's say the light that would normally be on your landing gear and it uses it to globally illuminate just about everything in the sim now of course not everything in the sim uh, was created to take global illumination so the results vary in terms of visual quality but nonetheless still really really great um, there is a cap I believe the cap is somewhere between two and 500, I don't know the exact number, but there is a cap as to how many of these lights uh, can exist in the world at any given time. Weather, everything remains exactly the same, as well as detailed precipitation, which are the new rain and snow effects that you did see in the introduction. And then of course, all of your control assignments pretty much remain the same. One big thing to recognize here is that because it is now 64-bit, um, FSUI PC does not work. So when it comes to controls, um, your more advanced controls will not be working at this time. Um, we are yet to see whether or not Pete Dawson will um, be able to make the conversion to 64-bit or if some sort of a compiler will be created or if Lockheed Martin will decide to create their own as some other developers have started to do um, with their 64-bit sim connects, but we shall see. So as we start the conversation about compatibility, Let's start by saying that even as the latest 64-bit sim, it already has the greatest add-on compatibility and selection. But I'll keep it short and say the chances are nothing but the most basic aircraft will work at release. Likely, it's going to be about another month or so for some of the key add-ons to make their way over, and that's if they still have an active development team. It could also be faster if they have a very large and active development team like PMDG, or it could also be slower based on turnover within their teams and or other complex dependencies on the sim. So really how long it'll take for your favorite aircraft to make it to the sim is a little bit up in the air, but it definitely will not be uh, relatively soon after release. But pretty much the entire ground world is compatible, minus any very custom um, animation assets or um, scenery assets such as you see here. But as of this review, nearly all of the Orbix portfolio is compatible with installers and folks like Aerosoft, Flightbeam, FSDT, Fly Tampa, and more are working on installers that will make their sceneries compatible as well. The core sky environment also has not changed from really FSX, so most of your ENV techs and Rex assets will work just fine. Active Sky may take some time to start working as a weather engine, but their textures 
uh, will work just fine as well. As I mentioned, as of right now, FSU IPC does not work, and there's a decent possibility that it never will, but it'll likely be replaced even if it isn't created again. But it missing does mean more to the community than just a couple of hardware incompatibilities. It also means that a lot of aircraft, especially legacy ones, that also needed it or depended on it, will either need to be completely rebuilt, recompiled, or left behind as we push forward into the 64-bit future for flight simulation. So this is a little bit of a complex topic to explain, but I want to take a moment to talk about the higher resolution textures and what is now available within the LOD of P3D. Now that we only have VRAM really to worry about, as conventional RAM can probably keep up with just about anything you throw at the sim, it's important that we now stop, talk about exponents of texture resolutions and not just LODs of texture resolutions. What I mean by that is that normally we would adjust our LOD as a way of increasing the distance at which even the lowest resolution textures for an AI aircraft or for a scenery are drawn. But now we can increase the quality and the resolution of the textures within the LOD through changing the exponents. This previously would have completely broken the sim because as you go up in exponents, by the way, default is 8, and you go up to let's say 9, you have now essentially visually doubled your LOD distance, but you have increased your terrain texture memory usage by four times because don't forget they're drawn in essentially squares. The same thing if you take it up another notch from 9 to 10, you'll now see 1024 size textures, same as you would with 9, but now at four times the LOD radius and 16 times the memory will need to be worked. So essentially what that means is that if you're using a default exponent of 8, your VRAM will be largely what it is right now. It's around 2 to 3 gigabytes, maybe up to 4 gigabytes that you'll need in terms of VRAM. As you go up to 9, you'll need something more like 4 to 8, somewhere in that ballpark, depending on what add-ons you have. And then last, if you go all the way up to 10, you're looking at now 8 to 12 gigabytes of VRAM that you'll need. Remember, this is VRAM, not regular RAM. So to get to 8 to 12, we're talking Titan XP, 1080 Ti type stuff. Very, very high-end hardware. I'll tell you that the majority of you, even high flyers, will have a good time with a texture exponent of 9, at least until hardware catches up. At the end of the day, P3D V4 does exactly what it says it wants to do. Be offered for simulation, training, and learning for professionals, students, and developers. It's not revolutionary, but neither was V3. But what it is, is the most complete commercial platform on the market today, and its 64-bit capability makes it more capable of delivering on its mission than ever before. So is V4 for you, especially if you're one of those target audiences? Well, Lockheed Martin has a 90-day free trial, so give it a shot and see if it is. And if it is, then you have to make the decision as to whether or not you feel this is where your money is best spent. Thank you so much as always for tuning in. Until next time, take care.